Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. What a delight it is to be with you today. This is the Monday edition of this week of broadcasting. My Bible is sitting open right now to the little book of 1 John. If you can, reach over, get your Bible, and join me there right now. 1 John and chapter 1. My friend, are you a blood donor? Do you give blood? Now, some people obviously cannot give blood because of certain conditions, but frankly, I get called regularly by the Red Cross asking me to give blood, and I do. My blood type is A positive. A while ago, I was reading something about the different types of blood that people can have and how many people have each of the different kinds. And here's what I saw in a Red Cross uh, article. It said that those who have O positive blood are 37.4% of the population. Those that have A positive blood, like I do, make up 35.7% of the population. Those that have A negative blood make up only 6.3%, and they that have B negative blood make up only 1.5%. But it went on to say the rarest blood type of all is AB negative. AB negative. My office manager has AB negative. And less than 1%, about 0.6% of the population has this blood type. Now, but what really caught my attention as I continued reading the Red Cross informational article was this. It made this statement, and I quote, the rarest blood type is the one that's not there when you need it, end quote. And that's a true statement, is that uh, you would agree with that. Now, friend, our section as we come to 1 John chapter 1 tells us that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. His blood supply is so great that any and all who seek his blood to heal them of their sin-sick soul's condition, they will find all that they need. There's no shortage with the blood supply of Christ. Our passage today tells us that we really do need Christ's cleansing blood. Join me at the end of 1 John chapter 1. As you're getting your Bible ready, uh, we are coming today. We want to urge you to be a person who tells people about the Lord Jesus Christ and his cleansing blood. And we want to urge you to do that and in part doing that through using gospel tracts. One of the tracts that we publish here is entitled, Have You Found Rest? Have You Found Rest? Oh, friend, how many of us have quoted or uh, many times those verses out of Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30? Uh, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. You know that. Jesus said, I will give you rest. There is a need in every person's soul due to their sinfulness that they need rest in their relationship with themselves and more importantly, with Almighty God. Dear friend, Christ came, shed his blood in Calvary that we can have rest to our souls through him. Here's a great track, Have You Found Rest, that will help you if you give it out to people for them to read how their soul can find rest in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to send you this track. Would you let me do that, please? At the end of our broadcast, my announcer is going to be giving to you three different ways to communicate with us. You be ready. Jot down the way that suits your lifestyle best and do that contact us. Give us your name. Give us your address. Let me send you the sample packet that containing all of our English gospel tracts, and let's be partners together in sharing the gospel more uh, more effectively and even further as we give out gospel tracts. Well, have you got your Bible open? Come with me. Let me read beginning at verse 7. 1 John 1 verse 7. 
But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. We are studying here the first major section in this little book of 1 John. Verse, chapter 1, verse 5 through chapter 2, verse 17 is this section. And I've entitled this section, The Crisis of Sin and How to Deal with It. The Crisis of Sin and How to Deal with It. In chapter 1, verses 5 through 10, talks about our relationships, and in particular, our relationship between God, who is holy, who is light, and you and I were sinners. As I said, verse 5 describes God as being holy, using the fact and describing God as light, and in him is no darkness at all. He is pure holiness. But now I've just read here verses 8, 9, and 10. In these verses, we find some details about ourselves that we really need to get right. We need to get them correct. We we need a correct, right view about ourselves. Verse 8 says that we can easily deceive ourselves. Uh, Let me tell you some lies that we well, God, sometimes people who call themselves God's people, some lies they tell themselves and frankly, they tell other people. Four lies in particular. Number one is this, based upon verses six and seven, with the lie is that our sins do not matter in our relationship with God. We, we try to have a close fellowship with God while we also are trying to allow for known sins in our lives. Now, friend, sin makes a barrier in our relationship with God. If I do something wrong against my wife, it's going to make a barrier in my relationship with her. So to sin makes a barrier in our relationship to God. Sin matters. Second lie, based upon verse 8, is this, that we deny we have a sin problem at all. We deny that we have a sin nature. We deny that we have this sin force in us that moves us and drives us to want to commit sin. Friend, if we deny that, we're foolish, but that's not what the text says. I'm just telling you what I know and you know to be absolutely true. Verse 9 gives us a third lie. Here, the lie is that we deny that we need forgiveness for our sins. And that we deny that our sins are actually acts of unrighteousness. But then in verse 10, the fourth lie is that we deny that we actually do acts of sin. Where in verse 8 denies the fact that we have this sin force principle in us, here in verse 10, we deny that we do actual sin deeds. Now, friend, if you and I are going to have an, uh, uh, if you and I have an unbiblical view of ourselves and this sin issue, we are going to do great harm, great damage to ourselves. And let me show you how here in these verses. If you and I do not believe we have a sin force, a sin principle, sin nature in us, what one man calls a sin bent, if we deny that that's there, then according to verse 8, we deceive ourselves. That simple little phrase simply means that we are leading ourselves astray. That's what those Greek words mean. We're leading ourselves astray. We are taking ourselves to a fateful, hurtful uh, conclusion. The idea of using cancer to picture sin may be overused, but it sure is effective. If you and I have cancer in our bodies, if we've been diagnosed with cancer, but we deny that that's really true, we're going to lead ourselves right into a coffin, right into an early grave. And just as cancer is real, so is sin. And the sin principle, the sin nature, the bent to sin is a real thing in us. We possess a sinful human nature. What we uh, will see and we get to verse 10 is that we act upon that sinful bent. Now, denying that we have this sin force in us also, according to verse 8, tells us that we have not been impacted by truth. His truth is not in us. God's truth has not had its needed impact on our lives. And frankly, uh, uh, our, our, this life truth 
is has not sunk in yet that you and I are sinful people. Now, when we read verse 10, we see another horrible consequence when we lack a biblical view of sin and ourselves. Verse 10 says that we call God a liar if we say that we have not sin, done sin acts in a personal manner. Oh, friend, the, the last thing you and I ever want to do is call God a liar. He is not a liar. In him is no darkness at all. But verse 10 also says that when we deny that we have done acts of sin, that God's word is not in us. We've just simply, we have denied the word of God. We don't know the word of God. Oh, you may, you may be able to quote me verses of scripture. I know people that can quote you the 10 commandments, but they lie like a rug. I can tell you people that can quote the 10 commandments, but they steal. Uh, they, they commit lustful things and, and adulterous things. Oh, they, they know the thing up in their head, but the word of God is not in them. Dear friend, if you say you don't do acts of sin, then God's word is not in you. It's not impacted your life. For time's sake, let me cut to the chase here. Sin is an issue in all of our lives. And to that you need to say, and I say, amen. It is an issue. It's the issue that that broke man's relationship with God back in the Garden of Eden. It is the ugly truth. Sin is the ugly truth that demanded Christ's death on Calvary's cross. And until you and I deal with sin before a holy God by repenting of our sin and receiving Jesus Christ as our Savior, if we don't do that, we will remain unfit for heaven. We'll never get to heaven because Jesus said, that he is the way and his shed blood at Calvary is the only remedy for sin. And if you're going to deny you're a sin, a sinful person, then friend, then you're going to never end up in heaven. Believers in Christ have a daily and, and frankly, a moment by moment uh, battle deal, dealing with sin. When you and I walk in God's light, uh, living and pleasing God, obeying him and so on, then you and I have the the ability, have the God-given tools to live a life that can say no to our sin principle, no to that sin bent in us. The only way to walk in God's light is to do these things. Number one, own our sin battle. Then number two, use God's provisions for staying close to him, having fellowship with him, and finally, keeping a short account of our sin issues with God. And that's what 1 John 1, 9 is all about. We need to confess our sin and God will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As I confess my sin to God and claim the cleansing power of the shed blood of Christ, I can know that I am forgiven because God has said so. Oh, dear person, you who's trying to be a soul winner. You and I need to be, be ready confessors of sin and quick connectors of God's power and grace to be forgiven, be declared forgiven, and then go out and share the gospel. Are we, pu- are we perfect? No. Are we forgiven? Glory to God. Yes. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.